Hey everybody. With COVID-19 being a big issue right now, uh, everyone's doing work from home. Uh, a lot of people are doing video conferencing. And uh, I thought I would share with you guys uh, some tips about how to get good video conferencing set up at home or in the office. Um, there's two main aspects to doing communication through video. One is the audio and two, the video, okay? So I'm gonna jump into the audio first. When it comes to the audio, uh, it's always good to test your surroundings. Right now it's raining outside, so if I'm quiet, you'll hear some noises. I've got, I've got a dryer running in the background. I've got it raining outside. Not ideal. So be aware of those conditions. Try to, try to work around it. Schedule a time. I remember I was in an office one time where we did video conferencing stuff and video stuff, and we had to shut off the AC when we did video stuff just to prevent that, that extra noise level. And that's my dog. Um, so check out your background noise, be aware of it. There's sometimes there's things you can't do, but you can try to mitigate it by your location and how you're set up. Uh, using a quality microphone is helpful. Um, they, they sell USB microphones for about 30 bucks. That'll just plug in, it's a condenser microphone, very nice, it'll sit on the desk. Um, works great, you can get a lot of quality for very inexpensive. Uh, sometimes you're gonna be stuck with the microphone that's on the camera itself. Uh, either through a web, USB webcam or the webcam built into the laptop. If In those situations, um, or if you're using your phone, just be aware that everything the microphone touches adds noise. Uh, that's possible noise. So if you set the microphone on the desk and then you tap the desk, you're going to be sending sound waves directly into the microphone. So the location of how it's mounted, all those things are important. Uh, if at all possible, don't touch the computer that's doing the recording or the microphone or anything connected to it. Even the microphone I'm using right now is on a stand that's sitting on the floor as opposed to the desk, and that way I don't have to worry about touching things. Um, they also sell rubber band mounts you can use to, to free flow the microphone so sound, vibration sounds don't impact it as much. Uh, but just be mindful of that, that uh, touching things. Uh, if you're on a laptop and you need to type while you're in the meeting and you're using that as the microphone for the voice, might be worth grabbing a USB, mic a USB uh, keyboard and not using the keyboard on the laptop um, because sometimes you get somebody who will start typing while they're in video and it's just like someone's thumping on the microphone. So be mindful of that because you will not hear it. It's always good to do a test recording on the equipment you're going to do and see what, listen back to it and see what it's going to sound like. Um, when it comes to the video, the biggest thing is lighting. You're not always going to be able to go out and purchase a nice camera. They make webcams of a variety of quality. A, a good webcam should cost about 100 bucks um, and will do a decent job, HD quality. Um, a lot of times you're streaming this stuff anyways, so it's going to get pilfered as by the time it gets to the client on the other side, it's gonna have, have been compressed a whole lot. So you wanna start with a really good signal and that starts with good lighting. So find yourself a soft light. That means like a lamp with a lampshade on it, not direct light. You don't wanna cast shadows behind you. Um, and look like you're in some kind of weird uh, terrorist kidnapping video, okay? So a soft light, um, you want it placed pretty much directly behind your camera uh, so that it gives you the most on-front lighting and the light reflections are all in this zone right here. Um, you'll notice if, you, if I move this thing off to the side, it's a little less impactful, coloring goes all bad. Better lighting, it's higher contrast, it's gonna compress better and send a better signal. Just give you better video quality, even with a cheap camera. Um, it's always good to have more than one source of lighting. So like I said, the shadows, um, you're going to want to have those, have it placed in such a way that you don't have harsh shadows. Uh, in a studio, you typically have backlighting and front lighting, and you'll even do like a hair light to help people have a little silhouette around them. That's all doable, but at home, if you at least have a front light and something that's like room light, just like an overhead lamp or something, or overhead light on so that you have plenty of light. Um, the main thing is not to be noticeable. Everyone's in the same conditions right now. People are gonna be doing home stuff. And right now, currently on NBC, the Tonight Show is filming from a couch in someone's house and the quality's terrible. So people's expectations right now are on all time low. Um, some other things to consider uh, is the placement of the camera. Uh, you want it at least eye level or above, never below. Uh, people who use their laptops, you'll want to set your laptop on something if it's on a desk or table to make sure that camera's eye level and not angled at a weird angle that 
makes it feel like people are looking up your nose. Um, that's always a little bit disrespectful and un, un, unglamorous to the uh, person being filmed. Um, think about your backdrop and your surroundings. Make sure there's nothing that's going to distract people. I have kind of a busy backdrop because this is my office space and this is I like it. Um, it's also just busy enough that you don't look at too much in the background and realize what's there. Uh, be mindful of reflections. Uh, people who wear glasses will find that that the, the lighting reflection can be a little bit much and you can see in my reflection all the all the lights behind me behind the camera. Reflections kind of break the fourth wall. Um, if, you, if people can see the camera or the lighting equipment behind the camera, uh, it can be distracting. So if you wear glasses, try to go without. Um, if, uh, if you've got big panels of glass behind you, just be aware and, and look and see what that shows so it doesn't seem distracting to the user. Um, your body position to the camera is important. Uh, you'll notice when I film, I sit forward, I lean into the, lean into the camera. It's a lot better than doing this. Not very, it doesn't make you look very good. So um, sit, sit up, lean forward to the camera. It'll help uh, make you look a little more uh, interesting in any ways and less, less lazy. Um, and uh, lastly, I would say uh, scripting things. Don't, don't just go off the cuff like I do, uh, you know, and script it into small chunks, especially it depends if you're going to be video conferencing or uh, doing video work where you're going to post it on YouTube or something. Uh, if you're going to be recording stuff that's going to get edited, do it in reasonable chunks that you can do. It's always hard. I've had clients before that sat down to do a, an interview and said, oh, this will be no problem. I can just, I'll just hammer this out. I talk to people all the time and we find. But then when it came time to say their slogan, their line, it, it took 100 takes to get it. So be aware that sometimes it's difficult to go long-winded in front of a camera. Um, and you also don't want to go for a long time because you will ramble. So keep your, your topics short and to the point and uh, try to keep that uh, video from being a nightmare to edit. Um, also, if you're doing a video conference thing, try to break up your conference with opportunities for questions, uh, not, not just a big long lecture. Um, it'll also give you a chance to collect your thoughts, get back into your notes, and, and stay on track. Um, that's my, my thoughts for analysis, and if I jot it down, I'm gonna try to make more of these and keep communicating by video while we're in this uh, state of the world today. I hope you're all taking care of yourselves, and if you need any help with anything, give me a call. Thanks, bye.